First of all, is this your first HLF? No, I was here, I think maybe the second one. Okay. Did you notice anything different between the two? <laughs> well, my memory's not too great, but <laughs> I'm reminded of things you might say. I've forgotten okay. a, lot, a lot in the four years. <laughs> but uh, it all comes back to me when I start walking here from the hotel and other things like that. And I have a bad memory, and you'll have to excuse me if I forget parts of your uh, of your history. Um, you you uh, were a professor or are a professor, yes? Oh, it's a little comp more complicated than that. Uh, most of my career was uh, being a professor at Berkeley, University of California. But uh, over 20 years ago, I retired. And then I got an offer, ship on, uh, offer and I took it to be a professor in Hong Kong. And so that went on for, uh, went on. am I being recorded now? Oh yes. yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so I was in Hong Kong as a professor, uh, some kind of university, distinguished professor even, at City University of Hong Kong. And then I, I left Hong Kong to, to go to Chicago. Uh, Toyota, Toyota Technological Institute in the University of Chicago. I had a position for about eight years. Okay, all this after I retired at Berkeley. <laughs> and then uh, at some point then I got a very fancy offer to go back to Hong Kong. And I resigned at uh, Toyota Technological Institute to go back to Hong Kong. And that was in uh, 2009. And uh, so I was there until last year in, in Hong Kong, and then I moved back to Berkeley, and that's where I am now. And now I don't, I'm emeritus at Berkeley, I have an office and everything, but I don't, not a job, but I do, uh, in some sense, work uh, via uh, DARPA. DARPA gives me some kind of support. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like over the, over the history of your career, you've had a lot of, uh, opportunity to mentor people. You've had a lot of students. And well, it's not, uh, yeah, uh, it's mixed. I had uh, essentially 49, 49 or 50 PhD students, which is quite a lot. So I guess that means a certain amount of mentoring of graduate students. Uh, and, uh, but a lot of my positions have been with a very small contact with students, small teaching. In the last f 15 years, uh, no teaching. And so uh, that diminishes my uh, mentoring or con contact with students. What, was your, what is your style generally, either here at the HLF or in your university positions, when you have a PhD student and let's say they run into a wall? Yeah, so I'm, uh, I do not uh, take care of them my PhD students that much. I let them be independent and some of them uh, have left me because I didn't uh, help them. You know, I'm, I'm happy to uh, give support, but it's, uh, they're on their own to a great extent when they work for me. So I, you know, I, I take this route where I let them be independent, succeed or fail. <laughs> <laughs> why, why do you take that route? Well, uh, that was my own route, for example, and also I believe uh, that this too much nurturing is uh, probably not good for the long run of success of a creative, important researcher. Well, let's talk about the, the students who are here, the, the young researchers. Yes. Uh, what's your interaction with them like? You know, how, how does it compare, I suppose? Well, these are sh very short term, and I've only been here a couple of days uh, this time. And uh, so, I, you know, some, some of them come up to me and at dinner and so on. I t I've been talking to them. Uh, yeah, uh, so it's a good, good reaction. And they're interested in having their picture taken with me. And uh, <laughs> we talk a little bit. And so, I, you know, I was at a, one of the workshops. I was a mentor yesterday at a workshop. And I just sat there. I didn't organize any of it. I just sort of gave a quiet support to the organizer who was a a uh, postdoc. Have any of the students uh, said anything or, or came up with ideas that really gave you new insight? 
through my whole years? Well, for, I meant uh, at HLF. Oh, probably not so much, no. Okay. It's too short a time to expect uh, otherwise. How about through, through, through your whole years? Where there's oh, yeah, sure. Right? Yeah, I've written papers with my students, in fact. Uh, yeah. And some students uh, I've worked with, uh, you know, for the last uh, 50 years off and on, uh, sometimes writing papers with them, some students, ex-students. So I, I keep a professional relationship with some of the students I've had. Uh -huh. Now, looking back at your own development, you said that when you were in, I would guess, your early 20s or so, um, you were mostly left on your own, and that worked fairly well for you. Could you sort of recap how that all Yeah, so uh, you can read this in the, you know, things like Wikipedia about me, too. You know, I uh, had a very mediocre student life. As a student, I was a B student in college, which is not too promising. Uh, and I failed physics, in fact, in my senior year, and I switched to math. I saw that. And then uh, as a postdoc, I almost lost my, uh, you know, I was almost kicked out of the graduate school because I wasn't doing that well. And uh, then uh, my prospective thesis advisor, Raul Bott, gave a course which attracted me. And also I was more ready for it. I got married. And so I was more uh, ready to get more settled down and write a thesis. And so I, I, I did that successfully. My thesis advisor during the main year of writing my thesis was gone to Princeton. So I wrote that mostly uh, on my own. He suggested a topic, and the topic was good. His uh, suggested way of doing it was not good. But, uh, so I, but it was OK. I, wrote, I finished a thesis with Raul Bott, my advisor. It sounds like he was fairly important to you. Yeah, because uh, he gave this very good course, uh, maybe second year of graduate school when I was beginning to get more serious as after I got married. Yeah, he was an inspiring teacher. Mm -hmm. What was his uh, behavior? I mean, how, how did he interact with you? Oh, yeah, that time he had lunch uh, with we were only, only three students in his course. The rest were all faculty. <laughs> and so the three students, he gave a little special attention by having lunch with them every week or two. So we, I would have lunch with them every week or two during the course. Mm -hmm. And th it was good. Any other mentors who stick out in your mind? Uh, no. I, in fact, in my life, I you know, hadn't have what you call mentors so much. You know, I don't, I don't be serious mentors to anybody either. You know, I like to set a, teach by giving an inspiring example. That's what I do rather than teach and telling what people what things are. I let them learn and try to set an example. The same for myself. I learn mostly on my own. That's been an interesting contrast I've noticed among the laureates. Uh, some have said that uh, math in particular is a team sport, and then you have someone like Andrew Wiles who is not part of a team. Yeah, and I don't fit either picture. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't go off and work by myself, far from it. But I, I work in an environment. Uh, and I'm, nowadays I'm working as a biologist, so I have to, I use the internet, Google all the time. And I work with other people now. Most of my career, I wrote papers by myself, but sometimes with other people too. Uh, so I'm more so, I'm pretty social as a mathematician, mm -hmm. right? But I, uh, most, my, my best papers probably by myself, mm -hmm. my best work. But you know, some very good uh, joint papers too. So it's mixed. But I'm certainly not Andrew Wiles type by going off and, and to, uh, you know, some uh, seclusion to work on a problem. No, it's not me. I like to be able to talk to people about it, even if they're not working with me, or ask questions. And now I ask Google, so. <laughs> You're, which has become all of our best friend. <laughs> yeah, so you can just write a, on the internet, you can, under Google, you can just ask a question, and they will immediately give you a reference to a, a few sources for answering the question. 
So that's extremely handy. And I, you know, I don't read either, so I just browse. That's interesting. That yeah, I don't. You know, I don't. I don't relate well to teachers. I, I do a lot of things, but uh, almost always without a teacher on my own. But uh, sometimes, it, like with Raoul Bott, that was inspiring to have him teach this course. But uh, I think I, you know, I use teachers to get set up to learn by myself. That's my own uh, way of thinking. Interesting. I don't read or I don't follow a, a teacher's routine. <laughs> and I didn't either. That's why I didn't do so well in college, maybe. <laughs> I'd like to, to move on to sort of the five-year questions. Uh -huh. uh, looking five years back and five years ahead in your field, uh -huh. what has changed in an interesting way? And then the second part of that is what do you think will happen in the next five years? That is well, my field changed five years ago. I, I became a biologist. Before that, I was a, uh, working in computational mathematics. So I worked in computational mathematics, and then I switched over to, uh, to working in pattern recognition, machine learning for some years. That was coming out of my work in computation in, uh, in mathematics. And then uh, four, four years ago or five years ago, uh, I started working in biology. Why did you make the change? Well, it seemed some interesting, challenging questions in biology which I could deal with from, with my background. Uh, and so I had, this was at City University of Hong Kong. They'd given me a you know, very fancy position with a huge amount of support money. So I put together a bunch of uh, hired postdocs and uh, put together a, a group. And we all learned biology together. They were not from biologists, but usually uh, Google and, uh, and some people in the group had some biology. So we, we learned biology, I did, with them. That was about five years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. At first it was computational biology. And then uh, the last couple of years, two or, th two or three years, I switched over to, uh, you might say, structural biology. So now I'm working on the structures of the genome, which is not computational biology traditional. It's not my learning theory, but it's using a lot of uh, mathematics to construct uh, the laws of biology. That's the idea. So I'd like to see biology like physics, where mathematics plays a big role in the fund foundations of physics, mechanics, and so on. Has a lot changed in this field in the last five years and the time you've been in it? Oh, it wasn't a field. It's not a field even now. Uh, no, I'm, uh, you know, just a, my friends I work with. Uh, yeah, it's not a field uh, because, for one thing, biologists, uh, they know statistics and uh, computer science and some math, but they do not know differential equations. And you know, differential equations are the things that knit physics to, uh, together with math. And I'm trying to do that in biology, so it's not a uh, traditional field at all. And biologists have a, almost all of them cannot read uh, what I write because uh, they don't know the mathematics. They don't know the differential equations. They know different kinds of mathematics. So it's, uh, but there are s some people who are in the edges of biology or in biology who can, who do know something about differential equations and, you know, communicate with them and then I manage uh, to get my papers published. I work with one other person now, Indika Rajapakse, Ann Arbor, so we communicate every day by Skype. Then he's got a biological lab and he has a PhD in uh, applied math. So anyway, it's, well, it it's, like it's not a traditional way uh, of the subject as I relate to it at all. Well, it, it sounds like a real greenfield kind of thing, and that's one question that comes up between the laureates and the students. It's like, especially computer science laureates, they say, yes, well, I got into it in 1962, and my professor had built the Mark I, and so on. It was a green field. Uh, and the question is, what are the green fields for students now? And it sounds like you've really discovered one for yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It's good, yeah. 
it's, you know, it's, in some sense, uh, it's not so easy because they're, you know, it's not traditional, and so I don't have this immediate uh, support by the biologists in general. Uh, but, you know, a lot of especially young people who are beginning to get some education in differential equations and are interested in biology, you know, they're interested in working on these things, and uh, oh, you know, I manage fine. Yeah. Do you, do you think, I mean, it sounds very exciting to be in at this time, do you think it will engage you for the next five years? It's a good question. Uh, you know, I'm 87, so <laughs> I don't know five years <laughs> what I'll be doing, but I'm, you know, very uh, involved right now, and also I'm not a person who predicts. I, you know, I, I'm against predictions because so many things happen. Uh, that, but you know, I see myself as uh, working to finish some of these problems. I'm, I see, I'm working on. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, that, you know, I've changed my directions in my career so much uh, that I just wouldn't know where I'll be in five years. Um, the last thing I wanted to ask you is about the HLF itself. Uh, so this is your second one. Yeah. So clearly you liked it well enough to come back. <laughs> and I, I missed a couple. <laughs> so what what brought you back? Oh, I I don't know. I just had this you know free period of time during this period, uh, and I enjoyed it. Uh, and it's uh, you know nice nice situation. The hotel I see now. I, I remember now how great the hotel was. The Europeish uh, Hof. Uh, and it's, it's a good environment, you know, with other colleagues, mostly uh, from computer science, I think, rather than math, some math. So that's good. Uh, it's the, all the young people, it's fun to talk with them at some of the meals we've had and uh, otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, even though it's not enough time to really get involved with the young people, any personal young person that persists anyway for me, still this, even this short period is, is good. Anything else you'd like to add? Oh, uh, well, I know it's a, I can say uh, in the two days I've been here, I guess it's two days, uh, it's been very pleasant and uh, enjoyable for me. Uh, and I look forward to seeing uh, the rest of the meeting the uh, same. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. I don't think I have any other questions. Okay. okay.